You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Hello and welcome to another broadcast of Diaconia, A Call to Service. This is Deacon James Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago and Deacon serving with Our Lady of Sorrows Basilica on the west side of Chicago. This is a show dedicated to talking about the call to service that we all have as God's people, not just those who are ordained as deacons. And with me this morning, as always, is Deacon Dave Brinsick. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Jim. Welcome. Welcome, Father Jason. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. And we're here again with uh, Father Jason Malave, the Cardinal's liaison for Renew My Church, who has uh, been with us on this structural journey that is moving into a spiritual journey. We're happy to have Father Jason back with us today to talk more about the spiritual journey and what we mean when we say building the new reality. Uh, so, uh, Father Jason, thank you for being back with us. Uh, if you could just give us some perspective, when we say building the new reality in this spiritual journey, the first question may be, why? Absolutely. If I can go back about seven years ago, um, when Cardinal Supic had been in the Archdiocese for a year, and he knew that there was a, a need for a renewal, both, and he knew very well there was going to be a need for a structural renewal as well as a spiritual renewal. And the church is always in need of a spiritual renewal, uh, really responding to what are the needs of the day, what are the needs of the moment, what are the needs of the people of God um, in, in the church. And so we embarked upon the structural journey, and we pretty much are done with that structural journey. Okay, so what does this, what does the spiritual journey look like? It was over the past seven years that a lot of investigation was done around the country, around the world. In fact, what are some of the reasons why Catholics, why, why people in general become disconnected from their faith? What are the reasons why they become disconnected? And there are five reasons that emerged as to why people become disconnected. And I'll go over those. And I think our strategy was to respond to each one of those. And we'll, we'll take a look at how we're responding to the first couple and then how, as the years go on, as the decades go on, how we, we'll respond to all five of those uh, Wonderful. disconnections that people have. So what are, those, what, are the, how, what are those reasons that people disconnect from the church? One is um, that people disconnect from the church because they don't have an experience of God's love. They don't, they don't really experience God's generous, tender, compassionate love being poured out upon them. Um, some do. I think about the kids in Kairos, the, the teenagers in Kairos retreat. They do, um, but then it doesn't become nurtured, and so they become disconnected, and, and they, they have that experience, but then it's, it, it falls short or, or it evaporates, and then there's they don't know what the next step is. That's one. Uh, so really encountering Jesus' love. Or a second one is really feeling deeply connected to a parish, to a parish community. So many people don't feel that connection to a parish community where they uh, feel really they have a sense of being accepted or valued or included. Uh, so many people don't have that. Um, we as the Catholic Church, we're big. And so sometimes people walk in and the only person that talks to them maybe is the priest who says the body of Christ. And that's it. That's the only person that talked to them yeah. when they had that experience of church. So how do our churches become more welcoming? And uh, we call it radically welcoming. Um, a third reason people disconnect is because they experience liturgy. The liturgy is beautiful, but sometimes they experience liturgy that's you know, rushed or that's not well planned or music was not on spot that day or the, the preaching was not on spot that day or the welcoming was not on spot that day. So they experience liturgy that, that's 
not as dynamic as it could be. That's a third reason people disconnect. And a fourth reason would be because, would be because they want to fill their minds um, with a deep, deeper knowledge of Jesus and our generous God and the Holy Spirit, and they don't find access to do that. They don't find any opportunities to do that. So an unmet need for a biblical or doctrinal formation. And then lastly, people disconnect because they want to transfer what they believe and what they love, the, the, their generous God that they love. They want to transfer that into service, service, the name of our, mm -hmm. of our program. They want to transfer that into service uh, to those who are in need, to service to their community, their church, their neighborhood around them. So those are the five reasons we found that people disconnect from their church. And we want to make sure that our, our priorities and our strategies respond to each one of those five as, as the years go on. Those are five big areas. Huge areas. So then it's where do we start? I mean, we've just finished the structural renewal. You're starting a spiritual new renewal. You're kind of inundated with this response of these five reasons that people are leaving. Where do we start? I think, first of all, we have to be attentive to the fact that in the structural change, people's parish communities were changed. Uh, many were united. So what does it mean to get familiar with a new pastor and worshiping in two different places? And many people's places uh, were, were, were closed. Some, some campuses, some churches came to a close. So first of all, we have to attend to the, the healing and the sadness uh, and the disconnect that people experience because of that. That's for sure. We've been doing that for the last few years. Uh, as we are attending to that, we could help hold up this vision of especially attending to the first two strategies. One, making sure that we, as a Catholic community, are radically hospitable, going above and beyond what we're maybe used to in terms of welcoming people and being hospitable for people as we gather together around the Eucharistic table. That, that's really important and maybe something that we didn't spend as much time on um, in, in past years or past decades. We just kind of assumed everyone's going to show up. We have to be much more intentional about our hospitality, our radical hospitality. I'll give you one example. Um, you know, we have ushers that are great. They, 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 they welcome everybody in. At best, they welcome everybody in. Um, but what about people just greeting folks when they get to the parking lot or in front of the church? Or we, we, we typically greet people only when they, open, when they come inside the church. Well, what about extending that out a little bit? Or another example, some parishes practice, some churches practice uh, pew captains where, look, there's somebody in charge of these 10 pews. If there's a new person there, you know, and you go and you welcome them and say, it's just really good for us to be together. And uh, this is my name and it's, I'm happy to welcome you. Or m maybe you've been here in years past and you know, I'm welcoming you back. Uh, those are just a couple examples of how we can really go above and beyond the call of duty in radical hospitality. Um, and, and that does respond directly to the fact that people don't feel connected. They don't feel welcomed or seen or heard or acknowledged when they walk into a church. We can be that. In Jesus' name, we can be that. We're called to be that for one another in building up the community of believers. That, that's one strategy, radical hospitality. There's many different forms. And the other one, Deacon Jim, is really allowing, allowing for an opportunity for people to come to know Jesus more deeply. Now, now, in some parishes, they did that through a beautiful journey called Christ Renews His Parish. Mm -hmm. Chirp, Christ Renews His Parish. Uh, it really did a beautiful job. That, if, that was a good for a, a percentage of the faith community of a parish. Uh, some parishes do that through their charismatic faith groups. Some folks do that. Some parishes do that through biblical groups. We're introducing um, what we call an entry point, uh, an entry point whereby people come together. Um, they, they have a desire to come to know a community or, or find the meaning of life or understand God in their lives, understand why they call themselves Christians, believers in Jesus. And we've introduced this, this whole idea called uh, Alpha or a soft entry point, whereby what's happening is now people in the pews already are learning that, you know, their, their relationship with Jesus is really important and they're called to welcome others and to share their faith with others. And that's something we're not used to. And as uh, time goes on, you know, we hope that over the first few years, not just people in the pews, but other people who are looking for a faith journey might have an opportunity to come together for a great meal, come together for a great um, conversation about faith and see some great input. So those are the few things that Alpha does offer that help people to come to, come to know one another okay. in, in a wonderful, hospitable setting. We, we're getting some cues from our friends over here. The uh, 
One of the bishops in the archdiocese said something I thought was very profound early on. He says, you know, as Catholics, we were learned to observe our faith, not share our faith. Mm. And so how do we help us all learn to be, yeah, I think you use the phrase, missionary disciples? Discipleship is something we don't talk a lot about. Again, we're a call to observe our faith, but in order to really participate in our faith or live our faith, that the, 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 the relationship with Jesus as a disciple, I think, is really taking on a lot of traction. And for the last 10 years or so, we were coming to call ourselves disciples a little bit more often. And that's something that's new for us. And Pope Francis talks often, all the time, about not just our discipleship with Jesus, but our missionary discipleship with Jesus. So if to be a disciple means that you pray and you serve and you share your, your time, talent, and treasure, I would say missionary discipleship would mean that you pray and you also pray well with others. And we, we like to pray ourselves at night before we go to bed, but we're also called to pray with others, whether that's formally in a liturgy, whether that's around the kitchen table, the dining room table, whether that's when somebody asks you to pray for them, you actually stop and pray for them. How do we pray well with others? How do we serve well with others? Not just serving because that makes us feel good, but we serve when it's uncomfortable. We serve with a community. We serve generously, our family, our faith community. And then how do we share not just our time, talent, and treasure, but also share our faith. And that's something we're not, we're not tooled on, we're not accustomed to, which has not been part of our, our Catholic uh, uh, upbringing. But I think becoming more and more comfortable with that as the years go on uh, is something that we're called to do as missionary disciples. Um, praying with others, uh, serving with others, even when it's uncomfortable, and then also sharing our time, talent, and treasure, and sharing our faith. For instance, how, how Jesus has touched you in this Advent season, you know, as we as we see anew and how, what does it mean that uh, we, we dive deeply into the mystery of Jesus's incarnation? We talk about the fact that God sent his son into the world, you know, uh, that, 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 that causes us all a pause, causes us all a, a moment of just, you know, reveling in the mystery of God's love for us so that he sent his only son. How do we share that? That that's something on, on our hearts. Wonderful. When we come back from the break, we'll talk about what are the supports that are available to parishioners and pastors to help with the spiritual renewal? And are there any fruits, early fruits that we've seen? Beautiful. We'll be right back. Join Catholic Charities on Friday, December 2nd for the 33rd annual Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball at the Chicago Hilton. The Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball is one of the most elegant galas of the holiday season in Chicago, and proceeds provide critical funding for our programs and services into the new year. Families, friends, and work colleagues make a tradition out of gathering at this extraordinary black tie event to celebrate the Christmas season. Enjoy an opening reception, gourmet meal, and live entertainment, courtesy of the Ken Arlen Orchestra, all in support of Catholic Charities. Don't miss this special night for a great cause on Friday, December 2nd. To purchase tickets for the Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball, visit catholiccharities.net slash events or call 312-948-6963. That's 312-948-6963. Year 44 for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed. What? what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday 
and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash school jobs. Catholic Charities 75th Annual Celebration of Giving is underway in support of those who are struggling to make ends meet every day. Individuals, families, colleagues, neighbors, parishioners, and friends purchase thousands of gifts and basic necessities to ensure Catholic Charities clients and their families have a joyful Christmas morning. There are many ways to get involved, including online wish lists that make giving easier than ever before. If you can join us in this special Chicago Christmas tradition as volunteers and donors, please email us at cog at catholiccharities.net. That's cog at catholiccharities.net. Or call 312-655-7401 in Cook County and 847-782-4210 in Lake County. Thank you for helping us spread Christmas cheer this year throughout Cook and Lake Counties. At my right hand or at my left is not for me to give but for those for whom it has been prepared. It will be given. It will be given. Welcome back to Diaconia. This is Deacon James Norman, Vicar for Deacons with the Archdiocese of Chicago with Deacon Dave Brinsick and Father Jason Malave, the Cardinal's liaison for Renew My Church. We we're discussing the spiritual renewal. Father Jason was sharing with us the focus areas of that spiritual renewal and building the new reality. We wanted to ask next about the supports that are necessary to help us all uh, live out a life as missionary disciples and build vibrant and sustainable Catholic parishes in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Dave, I think you had a couple of questions for Father Jason. So going, this is a huge undertaking that we're experiencing. What are the some of the supports that the pastors are, uh, have for the archdiocese? Deacon Dave, th thanks for being specific about supports for whom, which is the pastors, because I want to talk about the pastors and also the people of God. There's also supports for the people of God on the journey as well. But for the pastors, about seven years ago, a new role was created in the archdiocese called a parish vitality coordinator. It's about seven years old, seven, seven and a half years old. And uh, the Cardinal really wanted to make sure that our parishes are vital, vibrant, and sustainable for the future, into the future. And so that, that role was created. So we have got, for each of the six vicariates, we have six different parish vitality coordinators. They've been very successful in walking with our pastors, helping our pastors embark upon, especially those first two areas of uh, radical hospitality, and then what kind of entry point might we provide that allows people to grow deep, more deeply in their faith. Uh, so that's one. That's one is the parish vitality coordinators. And if you're a pastor, you know very well who your parish vitality coordinator is. If you're a deacon, I hope you also know who that is and uh, you utilize those resources. The second big team that's out there working in the archdiocese with all in all six vicariates is the evangelization team led by uh, Beth White. And over the course of the past five years, <clears throat> Beth's created an evangelization team that really does go into parishes and help parishes learn what it means to be an evangelizing parish, what it means to build a culture of evangelization, what it means to keep your eyes fixed on certainly those people who are in the pews, but also those many people who aren't in the pews. And it's, it's a very specific journey to become an evangelizing parish. So that's another large team that's out there working with parishes. When the parishes are ready and open to an evangelizing journey, uh, then the PVCs call in the evangelization team and say, okay, it's, now it's time. It's time for this parish to kind of grow in their evangelization. Um, a third resource for pastors, some pastors have taken advantage of coaching Literal, literal, literally coaching about what it means to build an evangelizing parish. And we've partnered with Divine Renovation on some of that coaching. I, I don't know how many pastors, 15, 20 pastors, have experienced coaching what it means to create a culture of evangelization in their parishes. And then the last resource that's available for all pastors and also for all the people of God is what we call the Faith Hub online resources. And this was built over the pandemic when everything had to be online. It still is online. Uh, some great trainings exist for parishes and um, 
those who serve in the parishes to grow, uh, to become a welcoming parish, a radically hospitable parish, and to grow evangelization teams as well. So those resources are available online. If you're a parishioner um, and you're in the pew, first of all, you know, it might be a little strange to hear the wor words building a new reality. You're like, what reality is that? And I think if for me, and I think what we find is that really acknowledging our, our journey, our relationship with Jesus as his disciple, the learner, a learner, and continuing to learn more and grow more deeply to Jesus, our friend, I think uh, that's a way of understanding building the new reality. And not just growing with Jesus, but also realizing that as a disciple, we're called to do what his disciples did, which is go out there and share the good news of Jesus. What good is it if we know that Jesus was sent from the from the God, the Father, and died and rose from the dead. What good is it if we know that and we're not sharing that with others in appropriate and loving and gentle ways? Uh, so that's what we're called to do as disciples, in fact, missionary disciples. So that's what building the new reality means. Um, and to that end, if you're a parishioner in the pews, um, I'd encourage you to go to the website because there's lots of resources on the website. Some really good videos about what it means to grow in radical hospitality. Some really good videos about what it means to uh, start tilling the soil to start to become an evangelizing parish and to create an evangel evangelization team that will provide for those entry points for people who are searching their faith. So the website's got some great videos, also some opportunities to see where Alpha is available across the archdiocese. Those those places where Alpha is being being hosted will be will be available are available on the website. What is the website, Father? Oh. Yes. Well, I always encourage people to go to the Archdiocese of Chicago and then click on the Renew My Church section. But I think you could also go directly to renewmychurch.org. Okay. That's the best place for it. Yep. Now, some parishes have been, you know, are further along than others. Are we, what are some of the fruits we've seen so far in, in the Archdiocese? I'll speak generally and then some real specifics. So generally speaking, I think parishioners are realizing um, their role in what it means to be an evangelizer. So for instance, people who are in the pews, have been in the pews for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, are realizing, oh, that's right. Je just as Jesus called his disciples to share their faith, he's calling me to share my faith as well. So in some of the parishes that are building this culture of evangelization, people in the pews are realizing, oh, that's my job as well. Not just father, not just deacon, not just the DRE or the CRE or the music director. Oh, that's all of our job is to be an evangelizer, share our faith with others, pray and serve and, and share our faith with others. So that's generally what's happening in some of the parishes. Um, specifically what's happening in the parishes is that they have created an evangelization team a team of people who are very specifically set on making sure that all the ministries of the parish, in fact, the culture of the parish is focused on sharing our faith and keeping our eyes open to those who are newcomers, keeping our eyes open to making sure we're all growing in missionary discipleship. So specifically, evangelization teams are being created and they are the ones also who host the alpha, the entry points. I think we see some of this at work well. I'll just name one parish uh, on the south side. Now, this is a unique parish because it was two parishes that came together. St. Adrian and Queen of the Universe came together as Mary Mother of Mercy, Mary Mother of Mercy in the Marquette Park area. And uh, they went through the unification and they uh, then moved very quickly into creating and crafting this culture of evangelization. So for three years, they've been hosting twice a year this, these entry points, these alpha entry points. And first of all, the people in the pews have realized, oh, that's right. Jesus has called us to share our faith with others. Go, go share the good news of Jesus, uh, be baptized and, and share the good news and, and, and evangelize and, and share the good news with all those you encounter. So that's a, a, a great parish that's really embarked upon the evangelization uh, mission and culture in their parishes. And they're also tracking folks after they kind of re renew that fire of faith. They're tracking people and the different opportunities that exist in parish life to continue to grow. Because it's one thing to you know have an experience through the entry point like Alpha, but it's another thing to keep on that journey, whether it's through Bible study or through small faith groups. Being a part of small faith groups that meet once a month or twice a month with other adults and continue to grow together in faith. It's something, again, as a Catholics, we don't often utilize too often is small faith groups. And that's something we find is very successful. So that's one parish that's about four years into their journey and doing an ex exceptional, exceptional job. That's great. That's great. So as a parishioner, then, the things I could do immediately upon hearing 
this show and listening to you, Father Jason, who speaks so passionately about the the topic of building a new reality is go to the website. First off, first off please. Right? Um, check in with my pastor or parish leadership teams to see if an evangelization committee is forming uh, and maybe lend my time, effort, and energy toward that, either in the area of welcoming or the soft entry points, wherever they may go. And And if there are soft entry points like Alpha being offered at my parish, I should go. Should. It, would it be good for me to go? It would be. And here's why. I'll say this quickly. Um, we all know people who are disconnected from the church. Every single one of us listening to this program know those who are disconnected from the church. And I've been to Alpha three times and I've been ordained for 25 years. Why would I go? So that I can legitimately, authentically invite others legitimately and authentically say, hey, I've been to this experience where people are welcomed around a table. It's a great meal. There's great content and there's great conversations afterwards in a non-judgmental way. I want to be able to invite people authentically having had that experience myself. So a, a, a deacon who's in the aspirancy program told me that the other day. I went, I went, Padre, but you know, it wasn't really for me and my wife. I mean, it was good, but we realized it wasn't for me. We wanted to authentically be able to invite others to this, uh, to this gathering, those who are disconnected from the church and disconnected from uh, their faith journey. Thank you. I wanted to uh, just take a moment to thank you, Father Jason, for your leadership, for your passion uh, throughout this journey of structural renewal. And now as we move into the spiritual renewal, I know you'll be taking a, a brief break uh, to come back energized and continue to lead us on this journey. Is there a reason for you as we close just to, to have hope for the Archdiocese of Chicago and for this journey that we're on? Absolutely. Um, what, I, what I've seen in the parishes that are really embarking upon this evangelization journey is, is something I never imagined I'd see as a priest. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm 51 and I'm going to be a priest uh, forever, but active uh, for the next 19 years. And it gives me hope to see the parishes coming alive. There's priests, there's pastors who said, I thought I came to close this church. And I realized, no, no, I came to evangelize and share the good news of Jesus with the folks who are here and then invite them to help share the good news with others who they know in a dynamic and growing way. So that gives me great hope to see my brothers, to see parish teams, to see pastoral associates and deacons come alive in, in being called very specifically to be evangelizers in the time and, and, and moment that we have right now here today. Well, thank you for being with us in this season of hope and joy and expectation. I think here in the Archdiocese of Chicago, we have a reason to have that same hope and joy and expectation around building a new reality and deep gratitude for the leadership of yourself and others that you've mentioned this morning uh, in helping support us move forward as missionary disciples. Thank you and happy Advent. Amen. God bless you all. Really good to be with you. Thank you. Father. Thank you, Father Jason. Thanks, Deacon Dave. To give my love, if you wish, to be the first you must see, to be a star. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media. At my right hand or at my left it is not for me to give, but for those for whom it has been prepared. It will be given. It will Yeah.